Hi friends, my name is Julie and welcome back to my farm. Today I wanted to introduce you to our pack of Catahoula Leopard Dogs and talk to you a little bit about this breed and why we chose them as our working farm dogs. The Louisiana Catahoula Leopard Dog originated in the state of Louisiana and is in fact the state dog of Louisiana. The origins of this dog date back to the 1500s when Hernando de Soto and his conquistadors traveled to what is now known as Louisiana and brought with them their war dogs, which were greyhounds and mastiffs, probably similar to the Spanish Alano Mastiff. There they encountered Native Americans who had trained the Red Wolf and developed their own hunting dogs. When de Soto left the area, he abandoned most of those dogs to roam freely, and the Native American dogs interbred with them. Later on in the 1700s, when the French arrived to that area, they brought with them their own hunting dogs, similar to today's Beauceron. It's believed that those dogs interbred with these Native American hunting dogs, and that is the origin of the Catahoula. The name Catahoula comes from Catahoula Parish or Catahoula Lake in Louisiana. And the earliest stories of an actual Catahoula breed come from about the 1850s. That's about the time that hunters and ranchers started breeding these dogs intentionally for herding and hunting purposes. Eventually a breed registry was established known as the NALC. And that's still where most Catahoulas are primarily registered, shown, and evaluated. But they are now recognized by the UKC as well. Because this breed has been maintained as a working dog, they don't have a lot of the genetic or physical problems that we see in many dogs that have been bred purely for looks or for show. And we're hoping they stay that way. Now, Catahoulas are bred to be working stock dogs. They're used most commonly to herd cattle and for pig bang or hog hunting, where they pin the animal by vocally intimidating it or baying at the pig and then allowing the hunters to come in and safely make the kill. Hunters will also sometimes use them to tree prey in the similar manner. They also make excellent guard or watchdogs as well as really good loyal family companions. They're of a medium to medium large frame they tend to be really well muscled and trim with a short sleek coat. And that coat is really distinctive and that's where the leopard part of their name comes from. Most commonly they'll be seen with a blue leopard or blue merle coat, just like cypress. But they can come in red merle or red leopard, just like maple. And they can come in solids like juniper. There's really a wide variety of color combinations that you'll see with this breed. The same goes for their eyes. Many Catahoulas have blue or glass eyes, but they can come in brown or amber or green, and they can have two different color eyes. They can even have two different colors in the same eye. Sometimes you'll see a brown eye with a little speck or a bit of blue, and that's called a glass crack or spot. So they're a very distinct looking dog. Now these dogs are fiercely independent, very intelligent, and full of energy. They're very agile and they have incredible endurance. And because they were bred and developed in the swamps of Louisiana, they are expertly conditioned to deal with hot, humid weather like we have here in North Carolina. Now, while the Catahoula can make a really good family dog because of their fierce loyalty, they can also be very protective and they can be aggressive if they don't have a job or at least a way to get all of that energy out. Here, most of the time, our dogs have free run of the farm and they run miles, they play hard. And then, of course, they also help us with any work that we need done. Catahoulas are known to have somewhat webbed toes and most of the time they have their dew claws and sometimes those are functional, which makes them excellent swimmers as well as tree climbers. It can also make them excellent escape artists. Along with their high intelligence, they're really good problem solvers and have an easy time figuring out how to climb a fence or if you're like Cypress, open a door. They really don't like change. If anything is rearranged and they didn't see it happen, they're gonna bark at it and they're really suspicious of strangers. But once they know you, they're a loving, wonderful dog. Also because of their superior intelligence, they're very trainable. All of our dogs have really enjoyed obedience class and you can see them get really fired up when they know that you're teaching them something new. They're also really competitive and they definitely want to do a good job, whether it's obedience class 
or hurting or just being the people first come. one to come to you when you call. Come. Good girl. Hello. Good girl. Good girl. Now, it wasn't long after I bought this property that I started thinking about what sort of dog I would want. Now, I knew I wanted one that was really smart, that I could train, especially since we didn't have a perimeter fence and I needed them to learn their boundaries. I also wanted them to protect that boundary, but I didn't really want a livestock guardian dog because they're known to roam and I didn't think that we could keep them on this property successfully. I also needed a dog that could work all day and it gets really hot and humid. We reach temperatures of upwards of 100 degrees Fahrenheit here in the summer. So I needed a dog that could take the heat and the high humidity of North Carolina and still be able to run around with me when I needed them. Also, as you probably know, we have a lot of goats and sheep on this property and we're relying heavily on electric fencing powered by solar chargers to keep them in. Now, that works most of the time but there are those rare occasions when an animal gets loose. So I wanted a dog that had some natural herding instinct so that they would be able to help me in that event and to round that animal up. I also knew that we were gonna have a lot of pigs also fenced with just electric wire. And if a pig gets out, it can do a lot of damage in a small amount of time. So I needed a dog that was brave enough to handle a big, large hog. So when I added all these factors together, it really seemed like the Catahoula Leopard Dog was the perfect choice for this one. But I wouldn't say these dogs are for everyone. In fact, the breed registry's motto is not everybody needs a Catahoula. And there's a reason for that. They can definitely get aggressive. And a smart dog can sometimes outsmart their owner. They tend to be a little bit dominant in my experience. And if you're not a strong alpha leader, then they could easily take advantage of you or turn aggressive on you as the owner. If I didn't have jobs for them or a way for them to express all that energy, then they would easily get frustrated. And dogs like that are apt to run off, get hit by a car, or destroy your home when they're left alone. So I have a unique situation here where I know that those dogs are gonna get plenty of stimulation and exercise. But without that, I would never have considered this breed. An unexpected role these dogs have taken on is that of pest control. As you might imagine, with the amount of animals that we have, we're buying and storing quite a bit of feed here on the farm. And where there's feed, you're gonna get rats and mice. It's just a fact of life on a farm. So while we do our best to keep our feed sealed in containers that the rats and mice can't get into, there's always gonna be a little bit of feed spilled around and that's gonna attract them. And to my surprise, these dogs have been excellent mousers. Now we've had barn cats in the past and they're very useful too, but I'm amazed at how well these dogs can sniff out and catch a rat. And while they're not livestock guardian dogs, and while I would definitely not recommend leaving a Catahoula alone with your livestock because they just have such a high prey drive, they're excellent protectors of their territory or their property. They dissuade all kinds of predators from coming onto the property and threatening our livestock. And they will chase, catch, or kill whatever they can. If it's an intruder, they're gonna go after it. Now this big boy here is Cypress, and he was my first Catahoula Leopard dog. He came to the farm about six years ago, shortly after we bought this place. He came from a breeder in Missouri and was born on a working cattle ranch. So he's from herding lines, but he also has strong hog dog background in his pedigree. And that definitely shows. He's really great at intimidating and moving the pigs and catching loose pigs. He's super tough and he never backs down. He's also really obedient and he's definitely my dog. He keeps an eye on me and follows me around and is my constant companion. He's definitely my baby dog and he sleeps with me every night. We're rarely apart. Cypress is on the larger side for the breed and he's got this big old block head as you can see, which gives him really powerful jaws. He's the best at catching rats, and when he catches one, he just crushes it with those big old jaws. He's got a lot of power in that big block head. He's about 80 pounds, so he's a big, strong, muscular boy. Now, Cypress has the classic blue leopard 
coat that you see most commonly associated with a Catahoula leopard dog. And while he's got mostly brown eyes, he does have a little bit of a glass spot in each of them as well. He's got some of the really characteristic traits of the breed. Cypress has this great sleek coat that dries super fast. He also doesn't shed that much, and when he does, it's just short little hairs. And for a big dog, he's been super healthy. He's got a little bit of wear and tear on his knees because he does like to run really hard, but we make sure that he stays well exercised and super well muscled to help keep those joints healthy. And while he's a big sweetheart, he knows how to look and sound very intimidating. So he's an excellent guard dog. Barking at the goat? He makes me feel a lot safer when I'm on the farm by myself. I always know he's got my back. Cypress here is super smart really too smart for his own good. He is an excellent escape artist. He's really good at opening doors. He can work either the knobs or the lever handles and he can pull the door in or out. He's really good at figuring out how to get out of things. When I first got Cypress, I was working as a veterinary technician at a local vet's office and he would come to work with me every day and they had a big yard where dogs could get dropped off for uh, daycare. So he grew up really well socialized playing with that big pack of dogs every day. So he's pretty good with other dogs unless they come on his property. And then of course he's pretty territorial and protective, but that's part of his job. From all those days at the vet's office out in the play yard, he pretty quickly figured out how to open the door and let himself back inside the vet's office. Now that initial door from the outside only led into the kennel area, but he could get into all kinds of dog food and treats in that area. So we got in the habit of always locking the deadbolt so that he couldn't get in. Well, one night, evidently, somebody forgot to lock that deadbolt. Cypress not only let himself back into the vet's office, he let about a dozen other dogs in with him. And when they got in there, they of course dumped the big 100 pound containers of dog food, had a feast, and then when they had eaten as much as they possibly could, Cypress opened the door from the kennel area into the main clinic office, and we had a stampede of dogs running wild through there. Basically, Cypress threw a big party. He was definitely the most popular dog in that flight group. And in our pack, he's definitely the king. Ow. Maple. Good girl. Good girl. This beautiful lady here is Maple. We also call her Mama Bear, and that's because she had a litter of puppies two years ago. And that's where we got Juniper. She was the first one born and the one we decided to keep from that litter. As you can see, Maple is a super sweet, loving pup. She's on the smaller side for Catahoulas, but that also makes her really fast and really agile. Maple also excels at obedience. She was fantastic when we trained her and she continues to learn new stuff all the time. She's always paying keen attention to anything that you do. And while all our dogs are from herding lines, Maple and Cypress both came from working cattle ranches. Neither these dogs nor myself have a lot of experience with actually herding animals, but we do rotationally graze our animals and move them around the property on a daily basis. And when we got the Catahoulas, I was really hoping that they would be a part of that, that they'd be able to help. Now, Cypress gets a little bit too rambunctious. And honestly, when all the dogs work together or even in a team, they just get too worked up. They get very competitive about who's gonna chase the animal. And they tend to just scare and scatter animals instead of moving them in the direction that we want them to. But Maple here is very, very patient and she'll be really quiet and she'll she'll hold the position really well so that we're able to move animals through a lane or if we need help catching them. A lot of times with the way our fences are set up in a circle, you're gonna just be chasing the animal round and round unless you have a dog that helps you. And she can go the other direction and she can actually help me get an animal in a lot faster than I would on my own. So Maple here has been our herding star. She's been super helpful. And even though she is very, very sweet and loving with us, she is the most fierce and aggressive one of the pack. She hates strangers, strange animals, strange people. She doesn't want anything to do with it. 
Her first instinct is to come at you barking aggressively and she will bite if she feels threatened. But once Mabel gets to know you, she's gonna be your best friend. Not only is she really beautiful, she's so soft. She definitely has the most luxurious and thick coat of any of our dogs. She's probably my most trustworthy dog too, to leave unattended. I can leave her out and trust that she's not gonna go anywhere. She'll just guard the property. She'll probably just stay on the porch unless somebody comes by and then she'll bark at them to leave. She can also be just a little bit crazy, but she's my most reliable girl, right? Now, Daryl and I drove all the way to Oklahoma to pick this baby girl up, and I was lucky to get her. There were a couple of breeders that I was looking at that had the type of dog that I really wanted, and Maple's breeder just happened to have a surprise litter that she hadn't taken deposits on, so I was lucky to get in and actually be able to pick first of that litter. And I picked Maple, and I'm so glad that I did. When we first got her, she was such an adorable, little loving puppy, so we thought, We'll start bringing her to the farmer's market with us right away and get her acclimated to meeting different people and dogs that visit the market. But within a few weeks, it became clear that Maple was not going to enjoy that at all. She is very, very suspicious of strangers and she did not like anybody coming near our booth. She determined that that was her territory to guard and having an aggressive puppy that people want to come and pet, but will snap and growl at them instead is not a way to make sales at the farmer's market. So uh, we had to stop bringing her, but she's very happy to stay here and protect the farm. And lastly, we have Juniper here. She's just about two years old and she was born here on the farm. She is the daughter of Maple and Cypress. The one litter that we've had, she was the one that we decided to keep. Now, people often don't believe that she's a Catahoula leopard dog because she doesn't have the distinctive leopard or merle coat, but she's what's known as a solid Catahoula. She does have some brindle trim on all four legs and around her muzzle a little bit, but she's still considered a solid because she's not leopard. She's what I could, would consider a medium large build. She's not quite as big as Cypress, but she's definitely a lot bigger than her mama. And she has a little bit of that block head going on like her daddy. Juniper is definitely the sweetest of all of our dogs. She's the most open to meeting new dogs or people. She's always very loving and playful. We call her the permanent puppy because she's still really floppy and uncoordinated, which is adorable, of course. And Juniper's job is really just to be a companion for us, but as well as for Maple, because Maple has a really hard time making friends with other dogs and Cypress is getting older and he's got some wear and tear on his knees, so he can't play as hard as she can. But she's young and small and agile, and she wants to run and play rough, and Juniper is the perfect companion for her. They play for hours every day together. They are the best of friends, and it's just wonderful to see that relationship between mother and daughter, and it's wonderful for Maple to have that kind of friendship with another dog. And while she still very much wants to act like a puppy, she is learning how to be a farm dog. She's been coming into her own and getting a little more confident and aggressive with intruders or predators and with the pigs as well. She has been really helpful at keeping some of our little piglets that slip through the fence. She's also been a really great rat catcher lately. Juniper is also the only one of my dogs that really likes to swim. She loves the water. She is not afraid to jump in our pond on a hot day or roll around in a puddle. Even at six years old, Sai still likes to play and wrestle with the other dogs and he can definitely act like a puppy sometimes too. silly sometimes. They make some crazy noises occasionally. <laughs> but they're really good at communicating that way. Guess that's it.
watched any of my other videos, you may have noticed that I have this tattoo on my arm. I got this tattoo about two years ago when a local tattoo artist wanted to trade her services in exchange for some of my rabbits. It just so happened that she specialized in botanical art. And I thought a great way to memorialize just how important these dogs are to me was to get a tattoo representing each of the trees that they're named after. So this one is Cypress. This one, of course, is Maple, fiery red for her personality. And this one is Juniper. Now when I can't be with my pups, I always have a reminder of them. Girls. Girls. Well, we hope you found this video interesting and that you learned a little bit about a dog breed that you may not have seen before. If you'd like to see more about some of the animals that we raise here on this farm, you can check out our farm tour right here. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.